if you're not keeping yourself in check as a leader, as a teacher, where if you're not keeping your focus, that, that focus is on Jesus Christ and that focus is on his kingdom, then that's when it starts becoming yours. And that's when you get into this where it's like, what are your intentions? They may have been good initially, but it takes a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, and you've slowly gotten away from the source. Anyway, he has no feelings. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Take two. Welcome to the Rethink Podcast. <laughs> You're in too deep. We can't let that go That's on. Fine. Anyway, one of the things I try to do uh, every single morning is make sure I let everyone in my family know that I love them. So I'll say, mm. I tell them I love them. Oh, but man. then one of the things I. That's sweet. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, one thing I also do is I tell them to remember who they are. And so that they're not just representing our family mm -hmm. wherever they go, but they're representing Christ. Yeah. Um, and so we have that discussion every morning when I drop them off. It's, I love you and remember <clears throat> who you are. Because I do think words have a huge impact. And, you know, we were talking earlier, like words, yeah, and feelings and stuff. I don't always like click those together and really hold on tight to them. But, but some I, people do. But some people, mm -hmm. it like, oh yeah, it is a huge thing in their life, and so well, it's it's like a moment that they it's like glued in their mind, mm -hmm. like they they can go back to it like it was yesterday. Yeah, like I believe in you, I'm proud of you, I love you. Yeah, or the opposite. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I it's figure a, if I say it every single day, when my kids get older, they're gonna be like, our dad told us he loved us every single morning. You know what I'm saying? Because it's so repetitive, and I really do mean it. You know. And so, but I want them to know that because I know when they walk into the schools, like it's tough mm -hmm. because I do remember that going through, you know, school and stuff. And there's just all these different dynamics, whether you're being called a name, being bullied or thinking you're being judged, or maybe you're in the popular crowd or whatever. There's always this like identity that's trying to be worked out and people are telling you what they think you yeah. are yeah so there's this environment where they're fighting to establish an identity and, and you're saying i just want you to know you got one yeah yeah right doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you've done or will do you, you you're loved you're i'm proud of you yeah you're precious to me yeah that's good words matter well that's all we have <laughs> well <laughs> Matt, you got a you got a young guy in in your house um i tried to talk to him yesterday and his word development is like it's incredibly fast how, how the acquisition of vocabulary mm -hmm. right i think he understands about everything he's yeah. still holding on the cards of speaking everything but it's coming so quick it's fun to watch him like learn to process because he's his brain is processing faster than his ability to speak you know so he's learning all this stuff when we when we picked him up he knew uh, best we could tell like four four english words so he knew Mama, Papa, and then he knew, this is great, he knew how to say hallelujah, amen. <laughs> Did he know how to say no as well? Uh, that was in Karundi. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, we figured out what that was pretty fast, too. <laughs> but, yeah, it's been fun watching him uh, learn to speak. Mm -hmm. He switched, what's Karundi? Karundi is his language. It's the language. Yeah, yeah. From Burundi. Any way you Burundi. can keep that alive in his mind? I don't know. He's got a little a little friend who's seven who uh, was adopted a couple months after him, and they Zoom every once in a while, and they will occasionally go back and forth, but not not very much anymore. And mostly it's switching to English. He he doesn't even communicate to us anymore in Karundi. It's it's all English. Gave up on you. Gave up. I remember when uh, mm -hmm. Isaiah did that. <clears throat> Like, for 17 hours of a flight, he repeated the same phrase in, in Taiwan ease over and over and over, right? And he finally just gave up and quit talking for like a month. Hmm. Hmm. And then we get a few English words. Hmm. Yeah. But to be unable to say, you know, I'm hungry or whatever he was trying to say, don't know. Right. Yeah. Frustrating. Yeah. Caleb, you speak two languages. But not either one of them very good. I think it would be very well. None of us claim to do real well. <laughs> well 
Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> yes. Hey, this is Caleb. Yes. Hello, I'm Caleb. Let's back up for a second. Why yeah. are you here? Um, oh, I, that's right. We kicked Levi. Yes. Out. Levi apparently was not talking enough, and they want me to talk I'm more. Talking too much. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's what it was. He's on vacation. Just kidding. We're just yeah. we're just kidding about that. Yeah, Levi will be back. Don't get us in trouble. Maybe. Yeah. Eh, we'll see. <laughs> um, you're new on what, staff. I am new on staff, so. Uh, I'm Caleb Baker. If you don't know me, um, a lot of you probably have seen me around, um, but I have uh, I am the campus minister at the Clay County campus um, as of effectively this week. Four this days, seems four strange days to say yeah. to you. Um, I've said it a lot this week, and yes, it is strange every single time. What does that mean? So, you're the campus minister. That's a, that's what we're determining still, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> we have troubles here. Well, what what do you think it means at this point? Um. At this point, um, I think this is a live this interview. Is, this, is, <laughs> this is a live interview. This is streaming as it's we not speak. not been paid yet. We're going to see as if we get that. As we, as That's we speak. That's true. Um, what, that, what that means is, uh, I think, as, as goals, um, I'm going to do everything in my ability to help people deepen their relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I think that's going to look a lot different with each individual, um, a lot different with the campus. Um, but I'm going to utilize tools probably I don't even have equipped yet that I'm praying the Holy Spirit's going to guide me in to, uh, to bring, uh, a relation with Jesus Christ in real lifetime with what that looks but like. What do you, what do you feel like? like? Tell us what you think your, uh, your passion with you know, working with people. What's your passion to see in them? I'm going to go back to, obviously, I mean, this is not just a church answer, but, but really I, I want to see people see what it looks like to know who their creator is like not just know this understanding this head knowledge of yes i believe that god created everything and yes i believe jesus was his son and he died for me but what does that actually look like to have a relationship with him what does that look like for the holy spirit to come and live within an individual um within a family and, and what does that look like when when a mom and dad or a, or a grandparent and they they come into that and then that just completely change the trajectory of their family and the legacy of their family and what that looks like and and to live live a life for jesus daily and to stop living life for myself um the last time you worked kind of full-time-ish where ministry was your was your vocation was where um the state of uh coahuila mexico coahuila. Uh, which is northern mexico that borders texas <laughs> And the last time it was a actual paid position was 2009. Oh, that's not that long ago. So this is 2023. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have kids then. And that was in Spanish. <laughs> that was in Spanish, yes. See, so you do speak Spanish. Yes. I speak Spanish. I have lost more than I can remember. So it's coming back. I failed Spanish in high school. I almost did. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> all right so what were we talking about words he knows two languages he knows two languages yes what, i wonder why i got distracted <laughs> I, I was wondering where you're headed uh, well i just decided hey he's sitting here let's let's, let's share him. with folks why he's who he is right yeah. i just want to clarify well, know for that, for my hispanic friends that i do with daily they will tell you that you know I Spanish. don't know two languages that you're fluent got it <laughs> to us you know two languages yes to you guys i can fool you for hey, sure. probably. Yeah. I mean, when we go to eat Mexican, you got that down. So you can order a taco like none other. Taco. <laughs> Yo quiero taco. Wow. Unbelievable. Even a dog can say that. Remember the little chihuahua? Yo, oh, yeah. Yo quiero taco, Bill. <laughs> anyway, just words. See, dogs don't speak, but, you know, hey. Words. Hmm. The thing so is, this like, this uh, starts out with something we should have probably started with before we've rambled for twenty minutes. Nah, I, I thought the same thing, but I figured not many of you should presume to be teachers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're going to be judged harshly. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. just rips off the band aid right away. What does he start there for? Well, from what I've studied, this whenever they got scattered, they were looking for essentially rabbis in these different communities, and there were people rising up to take positions and roles that they were not qualified. And it, it's not that God necessarily, you know, he doesn't, he uses normal people, but they were looking for a position of power or authority in their different context to kind of control people. 
I was reading that they were they were uh, taking God's word mm -hmm. and they were reading it, and then these rabbis would debate it back and forth. But they were more interested in gaining power by their words and not mm. pointing people to the word. Yeah. And so really what he's communicating is that anybody who is putting themselves in a position of leading God's people with God's word had better be really careful. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a difference between, there's a difference here between um, being a false teacher and saying something incorrectly in a life group or in a sermon or in a kid's class. Because communication is not always perfect, especially anybody who listens to one of our sermons. We're, we're going to say I hope something. nobody listens to these podcasts. We're going to say something that's wrong, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I did a few weeks ago, and I got on my phone, and I was reminded of it. Who, by, who, who corrected you? Uh, a faithful podcast. Levi. No, not Levi. <laughs> Just somebody, Levi we, so, somebody we go to church to. Somebody we go, we go to church with. That's why in third service, like, I'm really careful because the lady rings in there. Like, he knows he his knows Bible everything. better than I do. Uh, and so, like, yeah, we're going to say something that's going to be wrong. And that's, I'm not saying that's okay. We should strive to do our best to teach God's word accurately. But James is saying, hey, it's not if you say something wrong on accident. Like, it's intentionally leading God's people astray. Yeah. I, I see it in, like, <sighs> a lot of uh, Instagram and social media stuff where pastors are using God's truth to build their platform right to be an influencer yeah yep. and actually i just uh, got done reading a book from david platt and uh, he actually admitted to that after he wrote the book radical um he said you know he had all this fame and people were asking him to come talk to the conf at conferences and all this stuff and he talks about it, it was such a low point in his relationship with god mm. because um he was using God's platform to make a name for himself. Mm -hmm. And he, in the book, he actually talks about like that whole process of repentance. <laughs> wow. Of like the spirit revealed that to him hmm. that he was, he was, uh, what he called it, the mercenary uh, missionary. So he was basically for hire because of his platform or speaking about, you know, his book and stuff. And so, yeah, he had to go through a whole personal process of repentance on that. And I think, I think all of us are. It would be real easy mm -hmm. uh, to get a little following. Like that's essentially what's happening here in James. You get a following, and then you want to get a little more following, and it becomes <clears throat> not intentionally even in the beginning, but it becomes about you, and then your platform. Well, I think that's why there's the power of team, mm -hmm. and what's something we strive for here because. <clears throat> it is Somebody a lot. told me this week I was their favorite. <clears throat> well, I mean, Michelle, Michelle's opinion counts on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> We're not keeping the, score here. That's the deal. Is it, it's a whole lot easier to fall fall astray when you're by yourself. Yeah. Um, and that's true in following Jesus, whether you're uh, across the board. But but um, yeah, that's the warning and, here. Well, I think it's true too. Is like we all like affirmation. That yeah. we're doing a good job, or like, and then you gotta. We have to always like evaluate ourselves: Are we doing it for praise from people, or are we doing it to glorify God? And sometimes we just have to, like, I think everyone, no matter in what realm we're in, we have to evaluate that: Are we really seeking the yeah. the praise of people in our jobs or the things? we were talking about this in our life group a few weeks ago in this constant chase to have things so that the neighbors mm. like think you've really made it. And you're essentially, you're trying to build your own platform there by saying, yeah, we have all this stuff. And so we, we have We're it successful. together and we have it, yeah. you know, and that's James is warning us like keeping Christ at the center of our relationships that's why he uses then the examples going down through there of like, it's such a small thing. Our heart is, you know, and not the physical heart, but like well, the heart. I think that's why he connects um, words and wisdom together here. Mm -hmm. Because like, if you read it at first, you're like, he just stops talking about words. 
And then he starts talking about wisdom. And in my mind, when I first read it, I was like, these two things are not connected. But the more and more I've read this and studied it, it's like, no, they are connected. Yeah. The source of your wisdom, he says there's two spots, there are two, two areas of wisdom, worldly wisdom and heavenly wisdom. Where you get your wisdom determines the way you speak, which determines the way you live, right? Mm-hmm. So they're all connected. He's talking about inputs. Yeah. So I it, think so. This, James is particularly this way. We, we're... We're not done a service by whoever split this up and put chapters and section breaks in. Right. This is, it's one message mm-hmm. about how, how how you live out your faith in the midst of the struggles of life and it be real and transformational, right? In, in every area of life. And he's just going through lists of weaknesses mm-hmm. that we're going to struggle with. Well, and these people are... I mean, remember, they're just they're just now becoming followers of Christ. They're this concept of he talks about uh, nine verse nine ten somewhere in there about how we'll we'll curse uh, we'll praise God with our with, with our mouth and then we'll curse God's people mm-hmm. in the next. They're coming to the realization: wait, we're all created in the image of God, and so the way we speak to each other matters. Like if I came up to let me use Caleb as an example. I don't want you to hit me. If I if I went up to Caleb and I made fun of his kids, he's not gonna say, he's not gonna jump in the conversation. He's gonna get out of his truck though. <laughs> he's gonna get out of his truck. <laughs> he's like, come here. You know? Yeah. So I mean We'll just have a nice conversation. All right. It's, <laughs> I don't want to have that conversation. Um, but the way we speak about each other, it I mean it it matters because we're talking about people made in the image of God. I think yeah, we talk about other churches too. That's always a dangerous thing. And it's like what you said earlier on, we're not perfect. None of, there's no church that's perfect because we have a whole bunch of imperfect people in every church. We're imperfect. And we're imperfect. Exactly. And so uh, this drives me nuts is whenever I hear, you know, complaining, gossip, the, and we've talked about this in our life group too, is um, some people are working through their language of like what God wants to do in that. But gossip, slander, complaining, like those are more dangerous than sometimes the adjectives mm-hmm. or adverbs that come out of our mouths to describe something, you know? Because those are poison. When we gossip and slander against other brothers and sisters and churches, like, that's not that's not of the gospel. you got to go back and put yourself in the Jewish culture of rabbis and teaching mm-hmm. and the place of the word and how, you know, a young... Hebrew would memorize scripture and then at 12 to 14 they're going to uh, if they're considered to be capable Good you enough. know of, of proceeding they're going to be <clears throat> attached to a rabbi and they're going to follow that rabbinical school you know and that's when you see Jesus come on the scene and he's a rabbi and people gather around him because he teaches like none other and there there is this is such a distinctly different culture. You don't have a, a common access to the written word. So the teacher, you know, the rabbi, the the vocal leader is going to be able to be elevated, mm-hmm. right? So easy for them to abuse that. If they had access to somehow to knowledge about what God wanted, it's so easy for that to be abused, to be, to put themselves as a, as a distinction between the people and God. Mm-hmm. And man, we've seen that throughout church history. You know, I, you need me to get to God. No, no, that's not that's not right, right? But that happens all the time with with us as teachers. We can we get and people do it to us. They put us in a position. You know, um, I still get asked all the time, and I think it's becoming less and less because people see on the video when we do baptisms, lots of different people do it, right? Mm-hmm. Right. But every once in a while, I still get asked, "Is it okay?" If I baptize my child, is it okay if my friend, you know, almost apologetically asking, is it okay if you don't do it, but somebody else does? Mm -hmm. Because culturally we keep wanting to elevate that person of of the, of information. Yep. But what I see James pointing out here too, like it's pulling all that information that you're talking about. It's the intent of the heart. And I think a lot of times as teachers, um, then and now, like their intentions starting out maybe good, but it's, if you're not keeping yourself in check as a leader, as a teacher, where if you're not keeping your focus, that, that focus is on Jesus Christ and that focus is on his kingdom, 
then that's when it starts becoming yours. And that's when you get into this where it's like, what are your intentions? They may have been good initially, but it takes a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, and you've slowly gotten yeah, away from say, the source. people say, oh, man, you're special. You're, you, you've changed my life. Yeah. You've, it doesn't take very long for that to, like, puff you up. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I was thinking there's two times in, in the Gospels, Matthew 12 and Luke 6, that Jesus says a good man brings good things out mm -hmm. of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full yep. of. Really, James is saying this is the heart issue. So, uh, yeah, I was going to reference those. At the end of 18, I think he tells us how to do that. <clears throat> and he says, peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Mm. And I remember uh, this was a long time ago. I had listened to John Piper talk about this, about how he memorized uh, scripture and I actually shared this week about a just a conviction I had personally about memorizing God's word and I haven't given that probably enough diligence in my own faith I study but I don't memorize and I can make reference but don't know it and this this thought from Piper came up where he said <clears throat> if we're gonna sow he preached on verse 18 and that was it like for an hour, hour and a half hour and 45 minutes right. if we're if we want to see a harvest of righteousness, we will sow in our hearts God's truth. And so he gave a really simple thing, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it on Sunday too. But it's he reads the passage ten times. He says the passage ten times, like, of what it means. And then he will do, he'll say it memorized ten times mm -hmm. to, like, sow in his heart. Mm -hmm. Now, he's way smarter than me, so it only takes him ten. I probably need, like, a hundred. But, um it's this idea of sowing God's truth into our lives. And that's where righteousness comes from because it changes our hearts. Mm -hmm. And so then he went on to say that once it's sown in our hearts, the harvest of righteousness comes about of the speaking of the righteousness of God. So it's whenever, um, you know, we celebrate when God is moving in an area. We, you know, we celebrate people that are doing well in the gospel. And that is the cure to our disease of unrighteousness or the worldly wisdom is that we sow in our hearts and then we speak out of our hearts of that righteousness. And we keep that on our lips, the good news of the gospel continually. So this week I was, uh, on Sunday night, I preached at a, at a, another church. And I, anyway, I, I had 90 minutes in the car. They voted not to hire him. But they, about it. He's still here. But Levi. Wor no. Words matter. Words matter, Jeff. Uh, so I, I had 90 minutes in the car by myself, which never happens, right? And so I <clears throat> took my, my Bible app and I just listened to James 3 over and over again. Um, not for an hour and a half, but for a long time. And I started thinking about when I got to the second half of this about like what, what comes in is what comes out, right? Like what I'm filling my heart with, of is what I'll speak. And a few months ago, um, my wife deleted all of the social media off of her phone. And in a rash decision, I was like, I'm going to try it for seven days. We're talking about inputs. We're talking about words. I'm going to, I'm going to try it for seven days as an experiment and deleted them on there on my I wasn't I was actually on my phone when I was driving. Um forgive me, I've sinned. Uh anyway, so I, I delete them all right there. And I, I will tell you, like I am embarrassed at how many times on Monday I was reaching for it, like going <laughs> like just like scrolling, right? right? Like just mind numbing whatever. And on Tuesday I was like, okay, like I have to replace this with something <laughs> like, you know, like if I'm going to actually do this. And so I started something yesterday and it's pretty simple, but I started with James one and I just started reading a verse every time I pick up my phone outside of like a phone call, right? You can't, you can't yeah, hold on. Hold on. Wait, hold on. <laughs> uh, so that's what I started doing it uh, yesterday, just reading a verse and then navigating away to whatever I was doing. Um, 
I picked up my phone a whole lot less, you know, not because I didn't want to read, but because I didn't have anything to scroll. And it's amazing how if you replace that with the, the wisdom of God's word, how that affects your heart and that affects what comes out of your mouth. And I, I genuinely do feel like I have been a more attentive um, dad and husband and follower of Jesus this week because it's not it's not there. I, I don't know if I'm going to put them back. I, I really don't. So, yeah, I, I mean, I just got back from New Zealand where um, for, disconnected. Yeah, completely like zero. And you're exactly right. Like, I think God knew I needed that because in my own spiritual heart, you get in a rut sometimes. Mm -hmm. And when you create that space, I talked about that two weeks ago in Clay County, having, do you have room in your life to even receive God's word? And sometimes we fill it up with whatever it is, but it's, it's, it's so refreshing. This is the next though. chapter, but it's hard to eliminate a negative mm -hmm. unless you intentionally replace it with a positive. Yeah. Yep. Well, I was thinking about this was this morning, but verse one of this, you know, like, and how you're you're constantly as a communicator, you're you're thinking about your platform and all those bad things we talked about. Well, I've preached for three weeks in a row here, and the result of that is, like, if I'm on Instagram, I am on Instagram, <laughs> like, and I I hate seeing that. I I, I just really just don't don't like it because of that temptation, and when it's not there. I have no idea what is on the internet about what I've said. You know what I mean? And that's that feels freeing. So I need to say two things. I was just kidding about the they didn't vote for him part. So don't don't question me later about that. They definitely voted for him. They definitely did. <laughs> they turned him down. Just kidding again. <laughs> I, you, you both have referred to something that I think that's a useful a useful tool. We have a lot of people trying to read through the Bible in a year, and that's a great thing. You know, it's a positive thing. Um, but there's something about repetition that is a powerful, powerful thing. I'm teaching DTI. We're doing the Book of Acts right now. And so every, every week they're reading about 15 <clears throat> chapters. So they're reading the Book of wow. Acts every two weeks, huh. you know. Uh, and they just, when we're done, they reread it. So at the end of the class, they'll have read Acts four times. Mm -hmm. And they, they all said la at the session before last, uh, I'm starting to see something, patterns, repetition of things, you know, what, what God's really doing, the big picture of this message, instead of just plowing through information for the day. So the repetition of the word is a valuable, valuable mm -hmm. thing. Do you remember um, Adam Watson? Mm -hmm. Adam, Adam attended here. Carpenter did jail ministry. Great, great story of God's uh, redemption and restoration in his life. Uh, but he memorized the book of James. Yep. Right? He memorized that, the yeah. book of James. You know, that's pretty awesome. I, I remember a guy that Steve Becky had in his crew that uh, every day he had a paper clipped a, a note card in his cap. Concrete crew. Mm -hmm. Okay, concrete guy. And he'd take off his cap during the day, and he'd read that verse. Mm. Put a verse in his cap, and he read it repeatedly through the day, meditated on it. Um, that takes root in your life, right? And, and important stuff, inputs become outputs. Mm -hmm. It's good. Other things you guys want to say from James 3? I got a really awesome phrase that I came to my mind but I'm not going to use it here I don't want to get made fun of from, from Andrew <laughs> my words <laughs> cut deep <laughs> yeah I was thinking about how you're going to go ahead and say it yeah, no 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 yeah he's going to say it come on I'm not, not, not going to say it you can't leave the people hanging <clears throat> they can listen how are we supposed to know you'll, you'll hear it you'll make fun of me later in the sermon yeah but I was thinking about words and what came to my mind was... Hey, thanks for joining us on the <laughs> Rethink Podcast. The last, the last words of Jesus on the cross. 
And I was telling you about this yesterday. He like just Jesus juked you right there. Just absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking but, stupid now. I'm not, <laughs> he's talking about Jesus, and I'm trying to cut him off. <laughs> you actually said this yesterday. We, you know, his John's Gospel is the only one that records it for us, but he says it's finished. And he's saying it is it is complete, right? That's what you were talking about yesterday. Mm-hmm. And the only reason that the only reason that he James is telling us like, hey, he wants to be the sustainer of your life and the reason he gets to do that and have that authority is because he completed it. Mm. He he finished it. He did it all. And so that's why the brother of Jesus is now saying, Hey, he's much more than a brother. He's a savior, you know? Mm-hmm. Glorious, Lord Jesus. Glorious. That's good. That's real good. Good place to stop. It's complete. <laughs> Jesus completed it, not us. It's good. Hey, thanks for joining us on the Rethink Podcast for James Chapter 3.